Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to today's video. Thanks for joining me for another one. We're just going to go ahead and hop right into it. Today's video, as you read by the title, is just going to be a tutorial on how to achieve thick faux locks on top of existing locks. Essentially what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how you can combine your locks into individual braids. That'll be step one. Step two is how to wrap your braids with the Marley hair to achieve the actual lock. I'm going to show you how to get this length and also how to get this desired thickness. Um, and then step three, I'm going to show you how to make them, you know, flexible and not stiff and heavy and allow them to have some movement. So the look I was kind of going for and was inspired by I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but Lucas Sabat, I think that's his name. As far as the hair that I use, what I did was I got some packs of Kankalon or Kanekalon. I honestly don't even know the correct pronunciation for it, but um, the Kanekalon or Kankalon, I think it's Kankalon. Uh, but just like braiding hair, just like whatever straight texture braiding hair. Uh, the color I use is 1B30 um, because I know like my natural hair is like a 1B and then I wanted to have color at the ends. And then what I also got was some Marley hair um, which you can use this to crochet or whatever different styles. The texture is a bit different as it is a little more um, coarse I guess you can say a little more kinky um, and this is the hair that I use to wrap so this is going to be uh, the braided method using braids and then wrapping the braids I only ended up using like three or four of these to braid and then as far as like the wrapping I think I only used three packs of the Marley hair to wrap and this is something I also ordered on Amazon I act this actually came in an eight pack um, and I think each one like the eight pack of this was twenty dollars and then the four pack of this was $20. So yeah, if you want to see how we achieve this style, then just go ahead and keep on watching. Alright, so as you can see, I've already braided a majority of my hair. Now, I don't want you guys to focus on what the braids look like, because they're going to look like trash. But as you can see, my locks are like inside of the braid. My locks are small. Um, and there are, there's just a lot. I have thick hair, I have a lot of hair. So what I decided I was gonna do, I'm not gonna do like one lock per braid because then I would just have way too many braids. It'd be way too much hair and it'd be way too heavy and way too much work. I'm doing three, uh, three locks per braid. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my little uh, braiding hair. So I take like one, one section here and then I take a cross section that is a lot smaller. So like we have this and then I have just a smaller, a very like a thinner, thinner bunch of hair. Um, and what I do is I cross them. So I put one, the thin piece in the middle and then the thick piece is going across. So how it's going in the middle, I'm gonna pinch that together. And so now we have one, two, three pieces that we are going to use to braid. So these are the three pieces. I grab the middle piece with my two fingers here and then it's like nice and tight. And essentially I use this knuckle to pull it real tight and get close to the scalp so our braids aren't really like slipping out. But another reason why I did the middle piece so thin, one, because when we fold it in half it's two, but also because that's the piece that I'm going to put my locks on and I don't need it much thicker than it already is going to be because these locks are going to make it pretty thick. So we have our hair and I'm going to take my three locks here and then with those the middle piece that I have between my two fingers the thin piece I'm also going to grab those three locks right at the root. So I have the three locks at the root in addition to that thin hair in the middle and then I have my three pieces to braid one over here and then one over here. And so essentially, I'll just start to braid the hair. So every like couple of twists, I just like, you know, run my hands down it and uh, knot the hair down below so I don't run into any snags as I'm braiding. Again, it's okay if the braid doesn't look the best because all of these braids are going to be completely covered and wrapped in the next step when we actually go to make the faux lock. Perfect. 
All right, so now we've gotten, we've passed the lock. So that's as long as my lock was, and it actually stopped right here. So now we just have the braiding here. So this is like the easy part. What I do do, because I made the middle piece so thin, I'll just redistribute the hair. So I'll take some from, um, I'll take some from each of our three pieces and just add it to the middle, just so that we have like an even thickness in all three. And then you just finish the braid all the way down. I cannot stress to you enough how much the appearance of these braids does not matter. Like, th look at this. This is janky as can be, but that is A-OK -okay because I'm going to wrap it anyway. We just need something to wrap the hair around. So we have our next three locks here, getting our one in our three. And then we have our two. And what I mean by that is when we cross them over like this and pinch the middle, we have one, two, three. One and three are the thick piece, and then two is our little cross section. So again, gonna pinch it with my two fingers. The, the, the middle section, gonna pinch with my two fingers after crossing it over. Then I'll get those three locks that I just sectioned off. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna pinch it at the root with that thin piece of hair that we put in the middle. And then from there, we just start our braid. Okay, so now we're at what the most important part is, which is wrapping the locks. So as you see, I've already done, these ones are actually wrapped and dipped, which dipping is the next step we're gonna get to. These ones are just wrapped. And um, I mean, I guess I can show you the difference now. Look how these behave as dipped. You see how like loose they are? And look how they are undipped. They're really stiff and hard. They don't really have much movement. For the wrapping, we're going to be using Marley hair. Um, and this is what that looks like. So it's more of like a textured hair. Again, this is in the same color, 1B30. And it comes already pulled into like these little, like each of these bundles has these little pieces in it. So basically what we're gonna do, first tip that I would say um, is when you take out your like strand, we're not gonna wrap it like this, how it comes, because that's, you're gonna waste a lot of hair, you're not gonna cover a lot of area, and it's gonna be very um, smooth and shiny. As you see, I like mine to look very like rough and natural. Um, so anyways, what I do is I just pull it apart s slightly, just to kind of, you know, expand the hair, and I'll show you why. So we're just kind of separating it a little bit, spacing it out. The way that we do want to wrap it now is like spread out. So it's spread out like this. And you see how much more surface area as we wrap, make sure you have to keep making sure it's like still spread out. You don't want it to be tight together like this. You want it to be nice and spread. And then when you wrap, you want to kind of overlap what you've already done. So you see how I went over what I've done before? Gonna spread it out some more. And then keep wrapping. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing down the length of our braid. Because we have locks inside of our braids, obviously they're thicker at the top, thinner at the bottom. So the way we are gonna wrap it is also going to help with that. A lot of people will start from like the tip of their hair and they'll just wrap this all the way down. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep the section bent in half like so hold it up to the root so now i'm holding the braid and the bent and the the bent part together and then you're just going to go ahead and wrap it around the root of that braid and this is going to secure it to the head so as you see i have half and the braid together and then i have the other half over here and so now we're going to do what i showed you on my finger spread the hair out and start wrapping it around the braid. And wrap diagonally. Don't wrap horizontally like I showed you on my finger. Wrap diagonal in a spiral so it goes down. So spread the hair out, wrap it around. You're wrapping around the loose piece of hair and the braid together.
when you get to the ends of the hair let me show you the ends look like this it's like a pointed tip you do not want to wrap this because this this is not gonna stay down and so what I do when I get to the ends I just really comb it out and sometimes the ends I don't know if they like burn the tips or something um, but sometimes it's actually hard you cannot wrap the hair with that part it will not lay down it won't stick so just go ahead and like finger comb the, the Marley hair out so it's nice and airy and wispy and then keep on going so once we get towards the end of that first piece of hair this is where the second piece of hair comes into play that's why we fold it in in half also because the braids are a lot thinner at the end than they are up here at the root we're going to kind of use this to double wrap the bottom so that the thickness on the bottom matches the thickness on the top so just go ahead and kind of finger comb that that little tiny piece that we have left over from the first part into the second part and then just keep on wrapping so now that we have this left over, we're not gonna cut this. We're like I said, we're gonna double wrap it. So what I'm gonna do, and this will also help the ends stay sealed, is I'm just gonna keep wrapping, but now I'm going diagonally up. So now we're wrapping back up. And this is gonna help secure it. And also add that needed thickness to match the top of the braid. You feel me? And remember, it's really important that you keep the hair spread out during this process. If it clumps together, it's gonna be harder for it to stick. And so now that we're like on the last little piece of hair, just wrap it and like kinda like, you know, twist it in that same direction to make it mingle with all the other hair. And then the last thing I do is I palm roll it. So just take it and just rub it between your hands. And this just kinda gets it all to stick. So now you can't see where the hair stopped or where it started. If you were doing like goddess locks where you uh, were braided your hair with curly cancalon and have the curls left out at the end, you would leave this out and it'd be curly, but we're not. So basically I'm just gonna take my scissors, push them up into that. You know, you see this is straight, this is not, and I'm just gonna cut it. And then you can discard that. Next we have a pot of boiling water. We're going to transfer that into a pitcher. We have a whole half a head to do, so we'll probably just split it from the front and the back. And what you're gonna need, obviously, your pitcher. You use a pitcher because it's taller, so you can get the whole lock of hair in there. And also, if you use a metal pot, and I mean, accidents happen, your ear touches it, your head touches it, and then a towel. And this is very, very important. When you take your locks out of the water, they are obviously gonna be soaking, dripping wet, with boiling water. So now we're just gonna take that and it's just what it sounds like. We're literally just gonna dip it into that water. Make sure they're all in there. And go as far as you can go comfortably. I know the water is steaming hot, so you're gonna feel the steam. And hold it in there for at least 30 seconds. So now get your towel and be ready to catch that hair so it doesn't fall on your skin. You can already see how limp like the ends are. And then just go ahead and wrap them like a newborn baby. One thing I do want to mention, because I learned this the hard way when I did the other side. When you're dipping your locks, I know you want to loosen up the root too, but don't get too close to that water. And I say that because like if you imagine dipping a paper towel in, a, in water, and you know the water is gonna slowly creep up. So with you dipping your hair all the way to this point, to the root, and that water starts to like creep up the lock and onto your scalp, you are going to feel it and there's nothing you can do about it. So now they're dry and you see that? You see how loose they are? And now they like have their own movement to them. They move naturally by themselves. They're not as stiff. That's exactly why we dipped them. Then I'm just gonna take the last section of hair here at the top and do the same thing. So you see, here's a better view. Just get all of the hair and dip it in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. You see, they're no longer stiff. They all move. 
I'm very impressed with it. I mean, it is a lot of hair. This is very big, so I don't I don't foresee this being a style for everyone. But again, I just wanted to show you guys something, some fun things that you're able to do, even though you have dreads, if you wanted to explore with color or length or density or whatever, there's still possibilities, you know? You can do different styles, you can get you a little half up, half down, side parted if you want to, like, you know, it's pretty versatile, so I'm having fun with it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Let me know other things that you'd like to see here on this channel or if you have any questions, comments, concerns. And more importantly, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any of our future uploads. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.